This is a really, really common problem. So often when I'm marking papers, I see a question and I know the student knows the answer, but they wrote down gobbledygook. I, I know that's how it was basically the only way to describe it. And I know if I've got those students in front of me and I speak to them, they would be able to give me an absolutely perfect answer. But that's not what they wrote in the exam. And the reason that when standing in front of me, they can give me a perfect answer. And in the exam, they write down gobbledygook is because they've started to panic. And if you start to panic and you let it build up, sometimes you can find yourself having a panic attack in the middle of an exam. So here are a few ways that you can help yourself if you start to feel the panic build in the exam or if you manage to get to the point of having a full-blown panic attack in the exam. Um, a few ways you can maybe bring yourself back, calm yourself down so you can write that perfect answer in there so the examiner can see how brilliant you are as opposed to your teacher just knowing how brilliant you are. The first thing to remember is that no one is paying any attention to you. I know that, that that's not going to be what everyone wants to hear, but in the exam, in a room with hundreds, 200 people, everyone is looking down, everyone is thinking about themselves and their exam. If you start to panic, it can lead to sometimes feeling really self-conscious that everyone's staring at you. They're not. They will not notice if you start to panic. Unless, of course, your version of a panic attack involves standing up, screaming, projectile vomiting, fainting. No one is going to notice the start, okay? And if we can recognise the start and bring ourselves back, then hopefully we can avoid having a full-blown panic attack. But no one is noticing what is going on. So don't sit there feeling really, really self-conscious. Before the exam, um, if you feel yourself start to panic, nobody is going to notice. They are also focus in on themselves. Something that really contributes to the feeling of panic is other people. I'm sure you will be lining up for exams and the person in front of you says, oh, I did four hours of revision last night. How much did you do? Doesn't matter does not matter to you one little bit how much revision other people are doing. The only thing that matters at the moment is you. It does not matter what other people are doing. And I'm sure some people have said, oh my God, I didn't revise this. Or do you remember what this is? And all that does is freaks you out. So don't talk to other people. Just say, oh, I'm going for a walk. Or I'm gonna go and get a drink. Or put your headphones on. Okay, try and avoid other people as much as you can before the exam, especially those people you know are going to stress you out, especially the people you know or have previous of doing that, of like saying, I was up till two o'clock in the morning, what time did you go to bed? You need to go to bed early, staying up till two o'clock in the morning is not good. So avoid people you know are going to stress you out. Take each question as it comes. Maybe question one, question two, maybe even question three or four was an absolute disaster. It happens. It happens to everybody. That's that question. That is now in the past, is done with. How you did on question three is not going to affect how you do on question five. So try, and this is really hard, but try and compartmentalise what is going on. So not let the fact that one question didn't go very well negatively impact other questions. Try and say, okay, that question wasn't very good, this question is a new question, it's a fresh start, we can start all over again. If you feel yourself starting to panic, if you feel that panic building up, I know sometimes for me it kind of starts here, it feels very physical, it feels sort of like someone's pushing it down. If you feel that start to happen, <sighs> take some deep breaths. Now I know you're gonna think you'll be really noisy when you're doing this, so try not to go <gasps> like, but slow, deep breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, slow as you can. Try and keep like your in breath and your out breath the same, but nobody will notice if you start to do this. The other thing you can do is just cup your hands over your mouth um, to help regulate your breathing and remind yourself that this feeling will go away. This exam will soon be over. You are not trapped here. You will soon get out of this exam hall. This exam will soon be 
over. If breathing or talking to yourself doesn't work to calm you down, try a distraction technique. So try and look subtly, because you're not supposed to be looking at other people in the exam, but try and look at the person in front of you. Try and describe in detail exactly what their hair is like. You know, do they have it in a plait? Have they got it spiked up with um, tips or something like that? Look at the person in front of you and think about them instead of thinking about your exam. Or do something like counting backwards from 20. Something that will distract your mind away from the fact that you're doing an exam and the fact that you're panicking. If you know you're prone to panic attacks in exams, then there are a few things that you can do um, to prevent this. So beforehand, go and tell your teacher, whether it's your form tutor, your subject teacher, or whether you know who the exams officer is, and ask if you can be seated maybe at the back, at the side, or at the front. I know for a lot of people being seated at the back really helps um, calm them down because you're closer to the door, no one can see you at the back because everyone is in front of you. If you know that you do tend to panic exams, this is something that you can ask for. There are going to be lots and lots of people that have to do their exams in different rooms, that need this for exams, that need this for exams, so your small request of asking to sit at the back shouldn't be a problem. Make sure you are as organised as possible. So make sure you have your pencil case ready and it's in your bag and your bag is by the front door. Make sure you get some sleep, make sure your clothes are ready, make sure your timer is set, make sure you've got alarm set. So that you know before you go to bed the night before that everything is ready, that everything is organised, that you've done as much as you can to prepare yourself for that exam. Um, and then the last thing I've got to say is that if it all goes horribly, horribly wrong in the exams, you have lots and lots of options. It is not the end of the world. These numbers, these letters, these grades that you're going to come out with at the end do not define who you are as a person. You are much, much more important than your grades. There is always the option of taking a year off or resitting or ignoring the grade completely. So. If you do do badly in the exam, don't worry about it, don't stress about it, it will all be okay. Ouch. Mm, love you too, Krim.